Well, I'm talking about two different things here. Uh, one of them is called cognitive phenomenology, and the other is about narrative or narrativity. Uh, the, the stuff about cognitive phenomenology is really, an, it's really a negative move. The whole point is just to say that other people are wrong. Uh, these are the, what these other people say is that understanding language and is really no part of our experience, that our, our experience, strictly speaking, is only sensory experience. And I think it's just obvious that uh, a huge part of our experience is understanding things, being very... And one very simple argument is that if, if, that wasn't, if understanding things wasn't part of our experience, then uh, life would be a lot more boring than it, than it is. Uh, especially, think of all the philosophers. Why are they so interested in philosophy? It must be because they're actually experiencing the interest of the concept in, in their actual lived experience. So that's that bit. The other bit is about narrative. I haven't, yet, get, haven't given that paper yet. But here, there are two views which I think are false. The first view is that every, we all of us human beings live our lives, we think of our lives as a narrative in some sense. And the second view is that, we, that it's morally good that we do this, that we ought to think of our lives as a narrative. And I just think both these things are, are not true, and so I argue against them. I think that actually it's probably, for many people, it's a very bad idea to think about your life as a narrative, and sometimes you should just live without too much reflection. Uh, as for my experience here, it's just fantastic. It's extremely friendly, very good understanding of the English, which I, I feel bad because I don't speak Spanish. And it's a very friendly and uh, an atmosphere in which it's very easy to think well. And that's not always true when you go to a conference. So um, my work in general focuses on describing our experience from the first person perspective. And what I try to do is to discover and develop concepts that allow us to adequately describe the rich nature of our experience. And I focus on three kinds of phenomenological concepts that allow us to do that, what I call sensory phenomenology, cognitive phenomenology, and evaluative ph phenomenology. Sensory phenomenology is the kind of phenomenology that we typically associate with our sensory modalities. Evaluative phenomenology, I think, I argue, is distinctive of the emotions and allows us to represent value properties. In my discussion here, I focused on cognitive phenomenology, and that's the kind of phenomenology that's distinctive of conscious thoughts, what it's like to think that two plus two is four, or what it's like to think that temperance is a virtue. And in this particular seminar, I focused on defending cognitive phenomenology against some current objections that are being lodged against it in the literature, namely that it's not consistent with certain rational norms that we have, either um, those rational norms being a matter of action, rational action, whether that's bodily action or mental inferences. And I defended cognitive phenomenology against those kinds of objections. I've had a wonderful experience here. Um, the seminar has been very productive, lively, and I've enjoyed having so many students in the presentations asking questions. Thank you. Hi, so I've had a very pleasant experience presenting on my work uh, here. Um, what I mostly discussed was intuition and its relationship to other kinds of experiences that we have. And one way to think about intuition is by analogy with sensory perception. So if you think about how we know about the world, we know about it through our senses. But it looks like there are other aspects of reality, like morality and mathematics and metaphysics, which we don't learn through the senses. And a traditional view is that we have access to those things through intuition. And my work focuses on ways of making sense of and defending that traditional view against various forms of opposition that come from skepticism about the possibility of that kind of knowledge. Um, and this involves focusing on issues like what the experience of intuition could be, how does it differ from other experiences such as reasoning, um, and ways in which starting out with sort of say impoverished intuitions, we could come to have improved intuitions and what that might consist in. Sí, yo soy filósofo de formación, pero luego terminé convirtiendo además en historiador y sociólogo, historiador de la ciencia. Me interesa un problema mayor que es la relación entre ciencia y política, en particular en las relaciones entre imperio 
y ciencia y por lo mismo he trabajado viajes de exploración europeas al nuevo mundo. En este caso quise compartir en el seminario una reflexión teórica sobre cómo entender esas relaciones de imperio y ciencia en el contexto de España y el Nuevo Mundo, mostrando cómo la cartografía o la historia natural eran herramientas que permitían proclamar dominio sobre eh, América.